So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you a little story of probably one of the most important episodes uh, of Night Gallery. Now, a lot of people have said this is the best episode of Night Gallery, even though it's still part of the pilot episode that appeared in 1969. But for me, uh, it's it's hard to basically say it's not because there's a lot go a lot of shit going on here. So today we're going to be talking about the third segment of the Night Gallery pilot movie, of course written by Rod Serling, Escape Route, uh, directed by the great Barry Shear with uh, the great and outstanding <coughs> Richard Kali as Joseph Throbe, uh, Sam Joffe as Bloom, <coughs> and Norma Crane as a put upon uh, Lady of the Night Gretchen. Now, the pilot episode trilogy of stories concludes with its strongest entry, The Escape Route. Now, according to David Jules' Word, WordPress, it's one of his favorites, uh, like, uh, uh, like my, uh, my, my uh, opinion on it. Now, Kylie, a well-known Broadway and stage and screen actor, is outstanding in a tour de force performance as a Nazi concentration camp commander living in Argentina on the run from Israeli agents from his own inner demons. Now, a lot of people probably know this or don't. The uh, Nazis that escaped uh, persecution in the 1940s escaped to various South American countries and hid for years. And uh, after Israel was formed, or the modern Israel, they would hire people to try to track them down. And uh, this is kind of a kind of a play. Uh, kind of uh, everybody that's in a Nazi escapee is kind of reflected in this episode. Now, in this one, uh, Sroba. Throbe, walking on the Buenos Aires sidewalk, notices it's being followed by a car. He hops on the bus to evade pursuit and gets off outside an art museum, which he ducks into. He comes up behind an old man, Blum, who's very moved by a painting of a crucifixion, which features a horribly painful look on the victim's face. Blum tells Throbe, it reminds him of a friend's grueling two-day uh, ordeal on a cross at a concentration camp during the war. Regarding Throbe's face, Blum detects a familiarity and asks Throba if they've met. Throba lies that he's, that he's not German, but Hungarian. Now, he's heavy, he's, he's facing heavy guilt uh, uh, through the years, and this kind of, he's looking for escape, any way to escape uh, his inner demons, which basically he's trying to suppress. He's still the same evil character, but he's trying to be forgiven for something that's unforgivable. Now, in another of the gallery's rooms, Stroba comes out of the painting of a peaceful, tranquil scene of a man in a rowboat fishing on a river in the mountains. He is clearly intrigued by this image. He looks away, looks back again, and what we then see his face on the fisherman, which understandably surprises him. Of course, there's uh, various thematic music while it's going on, sort of like a German folk song. Now, astral projection was a big, big aspect of science fiction uh, of the Night Gallery uh, series and other books where you could take your body and move into somebody else's. Uh, and in this episode, he's trying again every way to either be forgiven or escaped or both. Now, when Throba returns to the gallery the next morning and again sees his face in the painting, he seems to be visualizing himself there to escape his reality, his guilt, uh, his running away, his looking over his shoulder. Now, later back in his squalid apartment, he confines this to his next-door neighbor, Gretchen, a prostitute who knows his true identity. She tells him that he's a number two on the list after Eichmann. Now, Adolf Eichmann was, again, one of the main organizers of Nazi Germany's de deportation of Jews to German concentration camps, who was captured by the Israeli Mossad agents in Argentina in 1960. This uh, event would seem to take place later than that. So, in essence, she's saying that Stroba is number one on the list of those they wish to bring to find. Now, the relationship is quite uh, interesting, where basically... Uh, the way the, the scene is set up, Gre Gre he's confessing to Gretchen, just like a well, somebody would go into confession, but Gretchen has no has no pity for him because he she knows exactly who he is. I don't know why uh, he doesn't try to kill her to shut her up, but you know, and Throba uh, tells her she wants God's compassion. He thinks that if he concentrates hard enough, he could have willed himself become that fisherman in the painting. Uh, Gretchen laughs at this. Stroba explodes and tells her to go to hell, to which she replies in probably one of the best scenes of the show, after you, Herr Stroba, after you. It should be noted there that while the thought of a high Nazi's deserving God's compassion is laughable to her, and likely to, to many, 
To see Richard Colley's performance as Thropa, he does to a degree lessen our sympathy. This is no small task, and that is why, uh, to many people, his acting job here is or at near the top of all the performances in the entire series. Uh, Kylie had a way of playing the everyman in every role he did, and that's what he does here. Although this is an ultimate villain, uh, deep down it's a person that really believes what he did was right. Now, the degree of his sins may make the sympathy impossible, but we can all identify with the desire to put the past behind us to be absolved of our sins to have a fresh start. The next day, Stroba is uh, back again to the gallery, looking at the painting and still sees himself in it. Then Bloom appears. From Bloom's point of view, the painting is as we originally saw it, without Stroba's face. Bloom calls Stroba by his real name, Arndt, and says he remembers him from Auschwitz, saying he recalls him with a riding crop, and that it was his job to indicate which of the incoming Jews would die and which would temporarily stay alive. Sam Jaffe's performance at Bloom is also a strong one, Strobel uh, denies that he that he, that this was he, and we looks at the painting again. He now sees images of himself in the boat, content, uh, and uh, of course these scenes from Strobe, uh, Strobe's imagination are film scenes, not a painting. Now that night at the bar, uh, a band uh, and a band is playing. Strobel, drunk, likely in part to his frustrating ability to will himself into that bucolic scene in the painting. Uh, turns his drink into like a beer stein and begins to loudly sing the German anthem, then approaches the band, takes the guitar player's instrument, and smashes it, causing a scene. Now, Blum is, uh, is following, of course, Throbel, and it follows uh, him as he staggered drunkly outside. Blum then speaks to him from behind the German, and he's in an inebriated state, offensive down. Uh, he replies to him in his native tongue. Realizing it's futile to continue denying, he admits that he, uh, he is who Bloom thinks he is. Bloom picks up Strobel's guilt, unleashing his fury, which results in his hands around Bloom's throat, strangling him to death, and basically say just one more of the six million. Attempted to leave town by bus, the Israeli agents who were following Strobel in the car at the beginning of the episode catch up with him. He manages to escape, and a chase ensues, leading to the art museum. Inside the darkened gallery, he begs, uh, he finds a spot where his idyllic painting hung, and Wills prays himself into it, but then we hear a scream and he's gone. We found out that the painting of the fisherman had been moved, and its place now hangs the painting of the crucifixion scene. This time, as the camera zooms in on it, with the terrified face of Strobel on the, on the man in the cross, we hear his pains. Now, it is spooky as all get out, and the idea, it's fast-paced, it's well put together, it doesn't really make any sense from a uh, plot standpoint, but in a parallel universe, yes, uh, people would be easily caught. I don't know, if there was, see, there was no cops that were helping the Israeli agents to catch these people because uh, that's what he moved to Argentina. There wasn't too much cooperation, so literally it was word of mouth. Now, uh, the uh, Strobel is, a, again, a Nazi fugitive where he was uh, an SS Gruppenführer which were basically uh, uh, like an upper echelon of the Nazis. Now, the final judgment here is more than fitting, but like I said, the visuals and the, uh, what they call the, 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 the pause, the pause video, there are certain scenes where he's being chased and he paused at a specific time. There's a specific scene where he, he hits like uh, water and the water sprays up and it stopped. Uh, but Richard Kiley is just tremendous. Such a kind and gentle man to play such an evil character. It must have been an awful stretch. But uh, Sam Jaffe, too, great actor as well, uh, appeared in numerous film, film noir. But the most underrated uh, actor in the show, of course, it's got to be uh, Norma, Norma Crane, who unfortunately passed away at a young age due to, uh, to, uh, uh, to breast cancer. And she was a very, very a good, not say an ingenue, but uh, she was a good TV actress and also uh, became a ma massive note for her performance in Tea and Sympathy. And uh, also was like a, a key a TV actress for a lot of shows. She was also in Fiddle on the Roof, which made her, again, appealing to the Jewish audience that this, uh, this uh, uh, episode was trying to hit in. For me, it's five stars out of five. There's not a bad note in the whole episodes. It's scary as old shit. That's what i got to say. Because you don't see the dead all coming till the end. What was great about Night Gallery, especially Sterling's work, he gave you something you didn't expect at the end. 
Now, time and love enough at last, it, it didn't work, but here it does work because, you know, uh, damnation should be, if you're a murderer, it should be, you know, you should pay for your crimes. That's what, that's what I figure. And spiritually, he's going to pay for his crimes until now and the end of time. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of, uh, of uh, the escape route. Again, uh, the best episode or segment of, of uh, uh, Night Gallery and one of the best segments ever by Rod Serling. If you like what you're doing here or a Night Gallery uh, podcast, let us know in a like, comment, subscribe, or share.